The modern housing market is plagued by various issues, but the most significant one for Americans is the high price of homes. In fact, the price of homes surged by 40% from the start of the pandemic to the final quarter of 2022, with the average U.S. home selling for a record breaking of 468000 this exorbitant price makes homeownership unaffordable for most Americans, forcing them to rent instead. The cost of housing is entirely disproportionate to wages, leading some members of Congress to believe that Wall Street is part of the problem. The situation is exacerbated by the fact that taxpayers' money is indirectly funding Wall Street's purchase of single-family homes. Large private equity firms like Blackstone and Pratium Partners are behind a relatively new type of corporation that buys or constructs single-family homes and then rents them out. Community organizers report that they are surprised by the number of homes owned by a corporate landlord when they knock on doors in certain neighborhoods. Industry advocates argue that these corporate landlords play a crucial role in addressing the nationwide housing crisis. The chronic shortage of affordable housing in the United States has been present since the financial crisis. The main issue in the current housing market is the high prices that have increased by 40% since the start of the pandemic to the end of 2022. The high cost of housing makes it unaffordable for many Americans, forcing them to rent. Furthermore, the housing costs are not in line with wages which leads some to believe that Wall Street is partly to blame. And it is outrageous that taxpayer dollars are helping Wall Street buy up single-family homes. Large private equity firms like Blackstone and Pratium Partners have supported a new kind of home corporation that buys or builds single-family homes to rent them out. They own a small portion of rental housing in the U.S., accounting for only 1% of all rental housing and 2% of single-family rental housing. However, the industry is led by a powerful group of companies, Pratium, Progress Residential, Invitation Homes, American Homes for Rent, Triken Residential, and AM, in 2021. They bought 28% of all homes sold, with Texas and Georgia at 19% and 28%. This is actually the result of interest rates being too low, rather than a result of Wall Street's greed. This is why it's imperative that interest rates remain high or increase, so housing prices would decline to relieve pressure for low-income families. The Sunbelt region, particularly in states like Texas, Georgia, and Florida, has become a target for companies such as Blackstone. In these areas, rents for detached homes have increased at a much faster rate than in other parts of the country, with a rise of 43% in Phoenix, 44% in Tampa, and 35% in Atlanta, compared to the nationwide increase of 24%. Experts attribute the increase in institutional groups buying up property as the cause of people who are destabilized in recent recessions. These companies hold onto these properties for years, taking them off the market and making it more difficult for young people and working class families to own a house. Companies like Blackstone are motivated by short-term goals to increase cash flow which they did with invitation homes when they took it public, leading to an 8.4% return on investment, while the stock market declined nearly 20%, compared to smaller landlords, who focus on long-term investment and tenant satisfaction. Private equity groups prioritize maximizing short-term returns. Real estate funds from these groups are becoming more popular as they serve as a hedge against inflation. Analysts predict that institutions may own 7.6 million rental homes by 2030, which would account for over 40% of the market. However, many experts believe that the solution to the housing crisis is to build more homes quickly, as the number of starter homes built has decreased significantly in recent years. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, the U.S. built between three and 400,000 starter homes annually, but in 2020, only 65,000 were built. Following the 2008 crash, institutional investors stepped in and purchased homes that had gone into foreclosure. Between 2007 and 2016, around 8 million mortgages went into foreclosure, and large investors began to enter the rental market. Investors stepped in to buy distressed properties when the housing market crashed, helping to stabilize home prices. The government subsidized some private equity firms to get involved in the housing market, which some argue was necessary due to the severity of the crash. This led to the creation of the single-family rental industry, with professional management emerging in the space. This approach prevented foreclosures and provided rental assistance to those in need. Experts predict that institutional investors may own over 40% of the market by 2030, with many real estate experts advocating for increased building to solve the current housing crisis. Despite criticism that these investors prioritize short-term profits, others argue that they provide a 
quality product to relatively high income individuals. Early on, it became apparent that focusing on tenants who frequently missed payments and homes requiring extensive capital expenditure was not a profitable strategy. Instead, Wall Street groups have shifted their focus to newer homes and higher income tenants or more discretionary renters, resulting in a better profit model. While some experts suggest there aren't many other options for people in this market due to supply constraints, others have pointed out that the rental market has become almost a captive market particularly for single-family rentals. This has shut many people out of the home buying market, and as home ownership is the main way for people to build wealth in this country, this can have significant financial consequences for both individuals and communities. High cost of housing has made it more economical to rent, and this trend is influenced by fluctuations in home prices and mortgage rates, typically costing homeowners a few hundred dollars more per month. However, the cost has risen to 42% compared to the typical home buyer's income of 29 to 30%, indicating a significant surge. Despite a projected decline in home prices ranging from 10 to 15%, the supply and demand issue is expected to keep prices inflated. Some experts suggest increasing housing construction instead of restricting corporate landlords as a solution to the problem, with some big REITs even building homes themselves. According to experts, building more homes could help alleviate the housing supply shortage. Currently, there are only 909 actively selling build-to-rent communities, which make up about 10% of rental home construction in the country. However, 26% of renters live in single-family homes, and this construction is not keeping up with the pace of rental demand. Some members of Congress want to limit corporate activity in the housing sector, including taxing vacant homes owned by private equity firms to force them to sell. However, such bills are unlikely to pass due to their drastic measures, such as limiting investors to owning only 1% of 100 homes or imposing significant taxes on additional properties. Institutional investors, such as Blackstone, own thousands of homes, which some argue is too many. Blackstone has stated that every home they own could go to a resident who hopes to buy the home later. Activists and other experts are pushing for rent control and more government regulation. For instance, in 2018, Blackstone reportedly spent around $7 million to fight against rent control for single-family homes in California. A spokesperson for Blackstone argued that the proposition would have worsened the state's housing crisis. Experts strongly argue that building new homes is the answer, but neglect to account for the low interest rates that caused the boom. The problem isn't that corporations are owning too much, but that prices are too high for the poor to afford assets. This could be fixed by raising interest rates, but will face economic pain, while experts believe that Wall Street's greed caused this problem, but the larger blame falls on the Federal Reserve and government policies that caused the problem in the first place. Be sure to subscribe, and thanks for watching.